Hi, it's Midnight Mule and today I wanted to share with you what I consider the Asperger's equivalent of a dear diary. Now, some people, maybe a lot of people, I don't know, like to write their feelings down in a diary or maybe the events of the day in a diary. And going back historically, I probably tried that on a couple of different occasions, but I would never have managed it for more than one day. And I think part of the reason is well, one, what's the point? And two, how do I even know what's written as time goes by? I know you can look back at it, but how do I easily quantify it and understand it? Now, for an Aspie like me, I very much like numbers. So I like to be able to quantify what something is. So, for example, somebody could say to me, what do I think the chances of that bridge collapsing in the next 10 years is? And I'll quickly gather lots of information in my head, think about different things, and I'll be able to say, oh, 0.5% or 0.05% or 3% and I'll then be able to justify where I got the number from. Now the way that Aspie speak and the way that neurotypicals speak when they talk about events or feelings can be very different. So as an example if you ask a neurotypical how are you feeling and they might say oh, a bit sad actually and if you said to them on a scale of 1 to 10 how sad are you where 1 is not too sad and 10 is desperately sad if they said, how sad are you, they might say, oh, I'm like a five or a six. Whereas if an Aspie says, oh, I'm feeling a bit sad today, and you said on a scale of one to ten, how sad, they would probably say a nine or a ten. So when an Aspie talks and uses certain words, it's quite possible the way they're perceived, how they're feeling, isn't actually quite accurate. Anyway, back to this dear diary idea. Now, I actually started this a few years before I was diagnosed, or even suspected I was Asperger's. And the reason for doing it was partly I wanted to see if my understanding of history and reality in my own life was accurate. So it's very easy for me to think, silly example, I've always liked pizza, but maybe I haven't. Maybe I didn't used to like pizza or Bob at work has always been annoying or maybe he hasn't. And maybe I just remember it as always. And I've heard other people say, like there's somebody I know says they've always supported Man United. That's a football team for those who don't know. I know full well they haven't always supported Man United, but in their mind they have. And I've got no written evidence to show otherwise and it's not important. Anyway, so what I'm going to show you just now, I kept an effectively a diary, but in Excel. And something important about this diary was it was very private and personal to me so I'm not going to show you my diary but I'm showing you something that would be equivalent and the same sort of thing that it might be this is all based on random numbers the actual results based on certain things but it give an idea so another Aspie in my position who doesn't mind messing with Excel may find this very useful and I wish I'd come across this years ago because I would have found it extremely useful so remember, this is a made up example, but it's good enough parallel of what it's like. So what was useful for me, obviously I have the date, that's yesterday's date, and so that's when I knocked out this example. So the 1st of February 2020, and I also write down the weekdays. The reason I wanted to the weekday was the way my life is, Sunday to Saturday, pretty much every Friday is similar to the next Friday or the previous Friday. So there'd be, I'd be expecting certain patterns to emerge based on the day of the week that it was. So I start with the days of the week and then supposing I feel I've got an issue with gaming. This is playing computer games online. So I think it's worth me tracking how many hours I'm actually spending gaming. So for each day I would write down a number and it'd be how many hours that day I spent gaming. I say online, of course it could be an offline game. The point is I'm playing a screen game. So I'm saying six hours, three, four, four, etc., all the way down. Now, one of the problems with spending a lot of time gaming is you can get totally sucked in and you might go to bed late. You still need to get up. So you're tired the next day. So I'd have another column that says, was I tired the next day? So obviously for Saturday the 1st, I couldn't fill that in until Sunday the 2nd. And so this would always be a day behind, but it's useful for me to see whether or not I was tired the next day. And once I start writing these numbers down, I can kind of see maybe I've got a problem 
And so as time goes by in this fictitious example, you'll see I've managed to reduce the amount of gaming I do. So okay, I may occasionally split up, slip up, and I game a little bit too long here. So okay, I'm still tired there. And this is very easy to do. And you don't need to exactly record with a stopwatch. Just have a gut feel. Be honest. The important with doing this, it's only for you. No one else sees it. Be blatantly honest what you think the answer is because it's for your own benefit. And then the next one, for those of us that are old enough, it's not uncommon for Aspies to use various substances to help calm them down or feel better or deal with situations. So perhaps I've got an issue with sometimes I think I drink too much. So honestly write down how many units of alcohol did I have? And then the next day I write down in the morning, was I feeling hungover? And so you'll come down, you'll see here that I've maybe I'm drinking too much too often and you'll see how often I'm having hangovers. And again, this is just useful for me because then I can look back after several months or several years and see how often I am drinking too much that it makes me feel bad the next day. Am I making improvements or not? And this isn't, the purpose of this wasn't to beat myself into the ground. It was to see what are the patterns in my life. And if I think I'm improving or getting worse, I can see for sure, was I really getting worse? Now this next one, I think would be easy for an Aspie to do, a lot of Aspies. I don't know how easy for a neurotypical. And that's the happy sad index. How happy or sad am I? The higher the number, the better it is. Now the range of numbers you use, of course, would be up to you. For me, I used it between zero and one. And 0.5 being like, well, kind of okay, I guess. And when I was doing the chart, anything lower than 0.4 was in quite a bad way anything 3.35 or less was extremely black and I think the highest point over the course of several years I passed 0.6 I don't know maybe three or four days it wasn't very often somebody else might want to do the full range from zero to one but for me seeing how things hover around the 0.5 mark that was good enough for me and then also what I would do I'd write a comment in each day and this is the equivalent of the dear diary so, for example, on the 1st of February, I might write something like, um, uh, just little things happen, like, um, took some rubbish to the dump, and it doesn't matter about spelling, it's only for yourself. Um, had a, I don't know, a fun game in the evening. Um, it might be um, somebody was unkind to you, you write down that person was unkind, and just write down little things that had an effect on your day. Some days you might not write anything because it's not worth it. And other days I might write war and peace. Now there's just loads in there and it explains basically what affected my feeling. So it might be, I think I've upset Susan at work or Bob was mean to me at work today and that affects my feelings. And then the next day it might be, uh, oh no, Susan wasn't upset with me. It's because she ran over a cat in the morning and it had nothing to do with me. So then my happiness index based on Susan at work would be higher. And it's all right to write about other people because it's just for your own sake. Now in my diary, some of my points got a bit lower because one summer a couple of years ago, it turned out my mum had cancer on her brain. And so of course that would affect my happiness index. And then within a few months, she deteriorated and then was dead. So these sort of things are recorded and looking back I can see what happened and by leaving comments something else that was very good at that is once I'd recorded over a year's worth I would often go back and see this date last year what happened and then I would see what the memories were and then what about this date two years ago and once you've got enough information I could see certain positives happening or it's I'd look at it and think wow that happened or I really felt that way about that. I don't think I'd do that now. And for myself personally, it was extremely helpful. Right, now what I've done here, I said about the days of the week. I'm looking at the gaming hours, but splitting them into days of the week. I've done this with a simple formula where I'm saying, if this day of the week is the same as that, then record that number, otherwise nothing. When I first knocked this up yesterday, I was doing it from scratch and I tried recording showing how I was making the Excel chart but it went on for too long and I thought a lot of people will know how to use Excel or OpenOffice or LibreOffice whatever it is you use 
So I decided to take it all out and just start with a pre-made Excel chart. Now, if it's the case that people would like help and know how to set up these formulas, I can knock up another video showing how to do that. But you may find you're happy enough just going to Google and working out, or you may already know. So at the top here, I've got the average number of gaming hours for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. The reason these are quite low is in this fictitious example, as time goes by, I got better and I was gaming a lot less. And you could obviously just, just at a glance, see how things are going. You could highlight, say, the higher the number is, the worse it is. And you'll see that when we get to the end of the week, the number's higher. So I'm clearly struggling with gaming too much toward the end of the week. And at the beginning of the week, I'm doing an awful lot better. So what is it about Sundays and Mondays that means I don't feel I need to game so much or I'm not able to? And at the end of the week, why am I so burnt out that I'm gaming more? And looking at these figures was a tremendous help for me. The next thing I was talking about was alcohol. And I'm going to move my little face across so we can see it better. Units of alcohol. And again, these numbers are lower because in this fictitious example, I do manage to cut down as time goes by. But again, the same thing. We can put conditional formatting on here and suppose higher is worse. You'll see that during the end of the week, I'm, I'm getting worse again. So if I feel I've got a problem with alcohol, what is it about the end of the week? Now, it may be I can't do anything about it and I just need it. I'm not addicted. It's just really helping me. And maybe I just need to accept that. Or maybe there's something I could do to help me taking less. Maybe I'm not alcoholic, but rather than drink a bottle of wine, I can get away with just a glass or a glass of sherry or something. That may be enough to take the edge off. The next one I've added in here, gaming hours, monthly average or 28 day average. So, of course, the first 27 days, there's nothing. But then after that. I'm taking the average you might be able to see up here the previous 28 days on average how many hours did I spend gaming and we can see how that goes by and once you start doing something like this of course the reason for that is you can chart it so over this fictitious year which we can see that I knew I had an issue and I managed to cut down very quickly I'm taking the average and if I look at my diary I see there were certain events here that made things difficult so I, I needed a bit of bit of release but then I, I still managed to carry on and for someone like me seeing as a chart how many hours I'm gaming it can help and also when you see you're doing better that can be a real incentive to stay on top of it. It doesn't have to be gaming and alcohol it could be you're eating too much it could be you're not exercising enough in which case high numbers are good. You might want to do calorie counting whatever is important to you. If you're into drawing but you never have enough time Maybe you'll record how many drawings you did a week or a month and you'll rate them, how happy you are with them. And you could do a happy drawing index. The next columns I looked at here was the units of alcohol I'd consumed in the week. The reason for doing that was doctors have made up, they've made up fictitious numbers. 14 units for a, a lady, 21 for a man is pretty much what's acceptable. And this is a running seven day total of how many units of alcohol I've had for the last seven days. And again, because we've got it in this format, it's obviously very easy to chart it. So if 21 which is about here, anything above that isn't good. You'll see for the first few months, I've clearly, clearly struggling with alcohol. But as time goes by and I manage to manage the circumstances in my life a bit better, maybe drink something a bit weaker, I'm managing to stay below healthy below the 21 limit. You may have your own goal. Your goal may be to get below 30 or maybe to get below 10. But the point is, I think for a lot of Aspies, charting it, and because it's personal, you're not trying to improve anyone else. This is just for you. You can see how well you're doing. The next one was the happy sad index. And again, I'm taking a monthly average here. So over time, am I getting more happy or less happy? And on here, on this fictitious example, if I go back here, I've put in some particularly sad days where a family member is ill. And so, of course, that's potentially, assuming you like them, is going to lower your happiness index and something good may happen. So that's the happiness index 20 day average. And again, you can chart it. And if 0.5 is like, mm, OK, 
here and here I was actually feeling actually you're right and there would be good days for me there's this was a particularly difficult time on average now there's actual peaks where it comes right down but looking at an average is useful because there would be certain days maybe two or three in a row where you can be really down and you'll think this is always wrong I am always really really sad blah 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 but by actually recording honestly you can see that you're not always in this pit of despair but when you are there you think you're always there at least for me personally that's that's how it worked and then one final one in this example and of course you put in as many examples as you want is how many times I've been hung over in the last month so remember we had a column here saying was I hung over yes or no and this simply counts in the last however many days was I hung over so in the last 28 days I was hung over four times or three times and so this is my monthly hangovers and of course you never want to be hung over and this was a particularly bad period here where I was hung over quite a lot because I just drank too much this will necessarily be necessarily be quite a square looking chart because you're looking at absolute events that are either yes or no over a 28 day period but again I might take some comfort from I'm doing an awful lot better here it can go the other way and you find out you're doing an awful lot worse so I think that's probably all I've got to say about that I hope you appreciate I didn't bore you too much by showing how I did all the formulas but I'm happy to do that I'd be very interested to hear in the comments below what things you think you might like to apply this to and how it might help you as always liking and subscribing helps me I'd like to know if you think this was absolutely useless or actually was okay thanks <laughs>